about uh, Varo and Robin, I think your talk is amazing and inspiring. Uh, I, had a, I had something in mind to begin my talk, but I was completely thrown off because um, I think it takes so much to uh, get out of the anger in your head. This is not what I have done, so I uh, not feel angry inside your head to go out, step out of that uh, zone and do something positively constructive. I think that's a very beautiful thing and thank you for being so awesome. Um, so before I move on with my talk, I need to see a show of hands. How many of you present here have been in a social situation and looked at other people and said, why in the hell are these people so happy? Okay, so now we know we're on the same team. Um, and those of you who did not raise your hands, I diagnose you all in denial. You know, um, I, I try not to be on the phone when I'm around my parents. So uh, I think two days back when uh, I was talking to Anshul and they needed a headshot of mine for the Converge thing and uh, I got this headshot click and I was really proud of getting a decent picture and uh, my father asked me why are you on the phone like you're sitting together and I said I'm just sending this picture because I'm supposed to give a talk. So he's like okay just show me the picture, he's very fascinated, he wants to watch. So he saw my picture and he's like, uh, you know, why, why do you have an expression as if somebody has stolen your password? Uh, he said it in Hindi, trust me, it was much funnier. Um, so he then asked me, uh, what is the topic of your talk? After he said that about how I was looking at my picture, there was no way I was about to tell him that I was speaking about depression. You know, and that somewhere is, in a meta way, um, what we don't talk about when we talk about depression. Because I didn't want to give him an idea that there's something going on in my head. Um, I'm Abhay Kumar, I'm a filmmaker. I'm not academically qualified to talk about depression. Um, so today, I will not give you a speech about how you can find out if you're depressed or not. I'm, I'm sure most of you know that. Um, I will not give you any statistics because what that does is that, you know, stats, with stats, the thing is, it, it always becomes this, or this nameless, faceless figures, you know, and, and, and these incidents just remain external to us, like, it happens to someone else. Um, but today, what I am going to do is, I'm going to share some anecdotes. So, um, a little bit about my film first. Um, I started making placebo when I was 25, it took me four years. In 2014, November, that's when I finished my film, um, I decided to move back to Chandigarh. That's my hometown. Stay with my parents for a bit. Because um, I just needed a break from this whole hectic routine of independent filmmaking, Bombay, and just this crazy world. Um, now, Chandigarh is a very calm place. It's, it's a very chill place, and nothing exciting really happens. Unless the Robies auditions are happening, and then <laughs> people get really excited. So it was a December morning, I guess, last year, uh, not unlike the morning today. Um, I rolled out of bed. Uh, I saw my father was getting ready to leave the house and he had a grim expression on his face. So I was like, uh, what happened? So he then uh, said that he has a friend of his who's like a senior uh, officer in the government. And his 15-year-old son had committed suicide. Um, having made a film which sort of uh, dealt with these issues, I was curious. So um, when I asked him the how and why of it, the details were sketchy, like they always are with suicides. People don't really like to talk about it. Um, so he said that uh, this, this student, he was 15 years old, he, he was proper, he was a bright student. Um, on this particular day, he failed an exam, and not even like a big exam, he was in the 11th standard, I think, one of those weekly unit tests, you know. Um, he came back home, the parents were not there. He, um, they had a pet dog. So the parents came back home to see their son hanging from the roof with the dog leash around his neck. When they came back, the dog was quiet. How do I know that? I don't. But I would like to believe that. This was a week later after the incident and my father was going to their house to offer condolences. and. Uh, I, I was curious about how the family is dealing with it, but I cannot imagine how a family or a, you know parents must feel when they just come back from an outing and they just see their young child hanging from the roof. Um, I went with my father. Um, 
We went to their house and things are pretty much normalized. Um, one week had passed since the incident, the family was sitting in the living room, they were watching comedy nights with Kapil. Um, and I, I could see there was a front being put up, like, you know, there was something uncomfortable in, in the environment. And, um, and I know that this whole attitude of what has happened has happened is sometimes the best response we have towards a tragedy. But um, after a point, I could not sort of hold myself back and trying to be as least insensitive, I put forth this question that uh, I asked the father that, what, do you have an idea that what would have prompted the sudden, um, sudden um, extreme step uh, from this kid? Because from what I heard from their conversations, they said that they, you know, he's never under any sort of problems and um, there's never been a problem, he's been a nice, decent kid. Um, what the father of the dead child said then, I will never be able to forget. Uh, he said, or translated to that it was probably some, some evil eye which affected his mind and just out of the blue suddenly he decided to kill himself. Till date, like I often go back to that incident when um, I, I'm trying to understand the perspective of how we deal with mental health and how, how we talk about it or how we don't talk about it. Six months before this incident, I was um, interviewing um, this very bright student of medicine. Uh, she was 23 years old. Um, she was a proper, beautiful, very popular amongst her peers, um, socially active. And we used to communicate via the phone or something like that. I would meet her to interview her about my project. Um, suddenly, one day, uh, she stopped making my calls. She stopped replying to my messages. So I was confused that um, what's happening. I found out that uh, her best friend had committed suicide the day before. Um, so I decided to back off. Um, I decided to put the project on hold and just wait and watch what happens. She called me three, four days later on. Um, she could barely speak. Her voice was a wreck. She called, uh, she called me and she asked me to tell her something happy. Now in normal circumstances, if somebody does that, I would get really pissed off. Am I here to entertain you? But um, I, I tried to sort of talk about some trivial details about my film and how like independent filming is so tough and I might be going under depression because of this. This tried to distract a little bit. Um, and, and she thanked me and we, we, we she cut the call. She then called me a week later and uh, her bright voice was back. She was she was talking about normal everyday things and I, I was really shocked um, because a week ago she could barely utter words out of her mouth and now suddenly she was back to being a normal self just a week after the incident. Uh, I found out that she has her final exams the next week. Somehow, uh, what this um, really bright intelligent person had done was compartmentalize that trauma somewhere to the side, I don't know which deep dark corner, and she trained herself to not think about what had happened, not to talk about it, not to deal with it because she had her exams coming up. For her sanity, for her career, there was no other option um, for her. It's been two years since I've known her and we've never spoken about it till date. And this is my brief talk about what we don't talk about when we talk about depression. There's a lot of stuff I would add, add on to as we take questions, but thank you.